be that's strengthening the muscles, helping out your core. Does everyone know what the core means? To you specifically? Yes. Oh, okay. Can I get some nods? Does everyone, does everyone know what I'm talking about when I say core? I mean, in your midsection, your abs, your lower back. Good morning, Jason. Okay. Good morning. I'm over here saying my dad's looking for one. So if you guys can feast your eyes on Coach Derek. Um, Derek, are you sitting on a towel? Yeah, so I've just got, so just to, uh, just to engage my core a little bit more, all I'm sitting on is a, uh, a cushion and a towel because, uh, you know, my backrest on my chair is set to a height where I can, you know, I can use the chair all day and, and not have a small back. So by sitting, by sitting on the towel and getting, getting, um, getting away from the backrest makes all of my midsection just a little bit more, just the bits that can, you know. So, um, you know, I'm a T5 incomplete, but um, sitting up here, I can feel, you know, like I sort of have to work a little harder to do the exercise. And, and that's the key, everybody, is everyone's going to have a different level of ability. <clears throat> but like Derek just said, it's just engaging what you have or, you know, don't make it so hard that you can't balance, but at least challenge yourself so you're working the process. And you'd be surprised at how much it actually works. And, you know, like we talked about the other day with the nutrition talk, you know, sitting forward in your chair, getting the feet out of your foot plate and sitting up more on the front of your pad, if you can, that will engage your abs as well, you know, your core. So let's do a quick exercise. Um, so we're going to talk about, I'm going to pull out this red cord pretty low resistance okay so now if you can well Derek won't have something to well he can actually put it around the leg on on that on his couch but I'm going to turn this a little bit can everyone see my banister so if you have something like this that you can you know put, you know just wrap the the thing around it doesn't have to be it, it, there you go see how coach Derek's doing so then, I'm going to move back to what I'm doing. So I want you guys to be able to see something from a side view of my shoulders. So if my shoulders are here and I'm doing things like this, right, and I'm rocking back and forth, that's not doing me any good, right? So we want to make sure our chest is out, our abs are engaged, our shoulders are here. So as we're pulling on these things right here. The first thing that goes is my shoulders, right? My shoulders come back and sorry, my left arm is bent as well, but my shoulders come back and then I can pull and engage. Squeezing, squeezing my shoulder blades back together first and then squeezing them together and then letting it out. And it doesn't have to be a lot of resistance. You can do this without resistance or do it with low resistance. This is going to strengthen those muscles in the back and back here, because it's very important because us in wheelchairs, mostly we're so strong up in front, our shoulders tend to start, they tend to start rolling forward. These muscles in the back are weak, these ones are stronger, so we need to focus on getting those stronger. Does that make sense? And everyone kind of follow that? So let's zoom in on Derek, because he's doing a great job. Carrie, can you just zoom in on Derek? Perfect. So watch Derek, he's engaging his core, but Derek, lay your arms out a little bit more if you can, and then squeeze those shoulders first. Yeah, bring the shoulders back first. There it is, see the difference? And right there, that's also gonna engage your core. So shoulders, see the shoulders, squeeze first, and then you move your arms, squeezing your shoulder blades together. That's really good, Derek. So, and you can notice that Derek is definitely trying to balance himself at the same time, so that makes it even harder, but it really, really works those muscles. Okay, so good job, good job there. Now we can do ones without that tying something on. Now you have to do it with both hands. What we'll do is what we did yesterday or day before. So if you just hold your kamaka, let's see your, let's see your, uh, let's see your cords, your bands. Kamaka, you were sleeping. 
Okay, so then what we're gonna end up doing is having our hands out in front of us as much as we can right in here, right? And then we're just gonna squeeze out to as wide as you can. I had a little tight. So you have them just straight here, making sure that we're squeezing the shoulder blades together. Not doing this. Different exercise, right? So our arms are out here, and now we squeeze and engage those shoulder blades. Squeeze and engage those shoulder blades. And you'll start feeling it. Once you're doing it right, you can really feel what's happening in that back area. And those are crucial. Can we zoom in on Derek, please? So really squeeze as much as you can. See now, Derek, how far can you go until you fall over? In which direction? Uh, it just doesn't matter. Like, so if you're coming to the, to the width, can you get as wide as you can, you know, and still holding yourself up? Oh, yeah, here? Yeah, right. So you're doing it. But does it, it, it makes you engage your core even more, right? The, the, the more we're in close, the easier yeah. it is to stay balanced. The wider we are, the more we have to engage our core. Yeah. For me, it's getting the hands out in front is actually, like, that is actually quite hard for me. <laughs> right. And yeah. that's the good part, you know, and you can do it. Everybody doesn't have to have your arms straight, but you see how he's struggling a bit more? Look at the core that he's engaging. That is what we're looking for. And, and what makes, But what also Matt, breathe, Derek, breathe. What Matt is talking about is how much I'm wiggling. You know, how much I'm doing this. That's what he's talking about when he's saying the, the core is engaging. It's all that little fine movement. Like if if an able bod was to do this, they'd be just bolt upright. Like they basically don't wiggle. So um, it's, it's engaging all those tiny little muscles that maybe work a little bit and uh, making them as strong as they can be. Yeah, and that's the key to anything. It's not just for skiing. It's not just for anything like that. But this is all stuff that's going to help you in everyday life. You know, just being around, being healthy, and being able to lean over to pick something off the floor and being able to engage your lower back and your, and your core muscles. So really cool. All right. So let's – so Derek and I and Carrie um, would like to – good morning, Emily. And We got Devin. We can't see Devin. We can't see Olivia or Paulina. Let's see. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the boat path water skiing from a course. This is for slalom skiing. When you guys are out there skiing with us, like if you look at, uh, I think, Kamaka's background right there, that's a slalom ski. Or not Kamaka's, I'm sorry, but Hunter. Hunter, can you put that picture back up with you and Derek? Okay, well, the, one, the ski that Hunter's in is a slalom ski, okay? So that's normally what we ski in. So if Carrie can uh, put up the picture of the slalom course that you created, please. Okay, perfect. So does everyone, can everyone see the green buoys? The green circles where Carrie's pointing at. Okay, so if everyone can follow that. So, Carrie, can you go to the bottom with your cursor? So, there you go. That's the beginning of the course. So, if you see the straight line that goes down through the green buoys and, and the red ones and the, 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 the round circles, so we'll call them, we'll, we'll refer to them as buoys. That's the boat path. So, the boat drives straight down the course, right? And the reason that you have that is so everyone gets an, you know, an even fair ride, right? The, the, the boat path is set. It never changes, okay? What changes is speed and rope length, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But as Carrie's showing you, so those green buoys right there, those are what we refer to as gates. That's the big starting part of the course. And then if she goes up to the top, that's the end of the course, okay? So you have the starting gates down there, and then you have the finishing gates, which are up there. So now if we can follow the zigzag, the, the hashed line there, that's the skier's path. So the skier has to ski through those 
opening gates. I'll wait till Carrie finishes the, the, the skier skis through the opening gates right there. And then out to the first yellow circle, that's one ball. It's what we consider one ball. It's the first buoy. So the skier has to ski around that, go to the next one. And that's buoy two. Go around buoy two, head to buoy three, and so forth. If you just follow Carrie's cursor. So there's six buoys that make up a, a, a complete pass. So as that skier goes around that six buoy and then has to ski out the finishing gates, those green ones right there. So if the skier does that successfully, then they have completed a pass on slalom. I can't see everyone's faces. Does this make sense to everybody? Can I get some nods? Aurora gets it. Camden's getting it. Ernesto, you got it. Abby, you get it. Okay, cool. I'm just kind of cycling down to make sure everyone, if you don't understand, you know, raise your hand. Carrie can see you um, and we can, we can repeat. So that's what we call a slalom pass. It's a slalom course. Now the boat, once it goes through the, in the direction that this picture is showing, it would turn around on the other side and come back the other direction. The course is the exact same. You would just be going, you know, obviously the opposite direction. So, which that's really cool. So the reason <clears throat> this becomes really hard, you guys it, and girls, is that the boat gets faster. Once you make a pass, you have to increase your boat speed by two miles an hour. Okay, so every time you make a pass, you're increasing by two miles an hour. So, you know, if you're skiing 21 miles an hour, which is pretty fast, you make that pass, then all of a sudden you have to come back and do it at 23 miles an hour. And if you make that one, then you have to go 25 miles an hour and so forth. So that's what makes it so much harder. So the better skier you are, and the more control and more, you know, abs and, and you know, things like that, you know, the faster you'll be able to ski. Okay. So does anyone have any questions on that, Carrie? You can pull that down so we can see faces if you can. That would be awesome. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions on this? Okay. Who likes to ski? Depending on your control. Yeah, I'll raise my hand too. I like to ski too. Okay. So when we are... Because obviously a lot of times all you guys just have a couple of times a year that you get a chance to ski, right? And we can do that, especially in your area. So I want you to stay contacted and connected with us because there's people around the country and every state that actually do water skiing. It's not just ability first. So if it's something that you're interested in, we need to make sure that you are connected with the people in your area. You know, and I know Abby's in our area and I think she's driving these days, right, Abby? Are you driving safely? That's the question. <laughs> okay, so hopefully we're going to be seeing some of Abby here pretty soon as well to get down on the water. Um, okay, so Derek, do you have some comments you want to add? Well, the only thing is you should explain scoring, um, you know, just out of interest. Um, go go if for you, it. If you don't make your first pass, so say there is, there is a minimum, so start with, there is a minimum speed that you can go through the course. You can't, you can't say to the boat driver, oh, hey, boat driver, I want three miles an hour, okay? You have to start, I think, at women, a minimum speed of 19 and then a minimum speed of 21 for men. Um, and does that sound right? 19, 20? It's, it's close. I think, I think it's, we, yeah. have the same spark, we have the same start speed versus yeah. men. So um, if you, you can choose whatever start speed you want to start at, okay? But you always choose a speed that you know you can make a pass because if you don't make those first six buoys, then you get no score, okay? You, act, well, you do get a score, but it's going to be the minimum. It's going to be one ball at the minimum speed, okay? So that means you're only competing then against people who also don't make a pass. So say like, I know my comfortable speed is 23 and I can almost make that with my eyes closed. So I always start at 23. So I know that at least I'm going to have a score on the board. The benefit of that is, is I also get all the scores below that. So I get 21 and I get 19. So automatically I have 18 balls 
just by running that one pass. So someone like Maddie, who is a who can ski it a lot faster than I can, Maddie used to start at say 25. So he only has to run one pass and he automatically beats me. Okay, because he gets all those below it as well. So he gets an extra six. So he's automatically done 24 balls, even though he's only technically skied around six in the competition. Okay. I'm going to just chime in really quick. So what Derek's talking about, just really quickly. So each pass that you guys make, there's six buoys, right? You get six buoy count, right? So that's why he's added. Like if you have three passes and three times six, Emily, what's three times six? You might be on mute. Are you on mute? Well, we can do, so as we go, so three times six is 18, right? So that means you get 18 buoys, right? And that's what he's talking about. So each pass that you make, Thank you, you get a count of six buoys. So that's why he's adding that. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that part. Go ahead, Derek, sorry. No, 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 that's just what I wanted to explain. So, so say I run that, that 23 mile an hour pass, I get six buoys, then I come back the other way and I get around five, but I miss the sixth one. That means that I get five at 20, 25 miles an hour. Um, and when you add that up, it would be the, the 18 buoys plus five, okay? So that's, that's how you score in slalom, okay? And they actually break it down to quarter buoys. So whether you get halfway out, halfway round, or, and even halfway back, they all break it down into quarters, but it, it, it's getting, it's a it bit technical uh, and things like that. And that's just, and that's, you know, to break up ties and things like that. You know, if you, you can win by getting a quarter buoy. If you might run, you know, five and a quarter and somebody runs five, that five and a quarter wins. Because you get more. It's like Coach Mayo, when he goes down there and skis with us, he just does so many weight crosses, nobody can even count that high. So he always beats everybody. Um, okay, so let's talk some stuff. Uh, do we want to show a slalom video? Do you have a slalom video carry on there that we can just show? Of, uh, I think Guzman's might be pretty cool. If that one works good. We're going to show you guys a video of Chad Guzman. Uh, who is the current world record holder in slalom. And it's a kind of a cool uh, video that shows it from his perspective, from his GoPro. So he's behind the boat. He's pulling out nice and wide. Now he's making his cut to go through those gates right there. And then around one ball, round two, kind of a little bit choppy. Three, four. And then there's four, five. five, and then six, right? And then he goes out those gates. Oh, it didn't quite show it. So now here's from an aerial view. It's a beautiful lake there. I wish we lived there. So now you can see the boat path is going straight. There's the arrow. Skier's trajectory. Now it's going to show you a couple arrows right there. Those where the gates are, right? <laughs> Can't see the buoys, but those are the gates. So he skis through it. And now those, now you'll see the arrow that points to the one ball. It's the first buoy that you can't see, but you just know it's there. He skis around it. And then heads towards two ball. Then skis around it. And then, et cetera, et cetera. Now you won't see the arrows anymore, but know that he's skiing around those buoys. Does this make sense? Can everyone see and follow what's happening? Okay, looking like we're getting some nods and some thumbs up. So now when he's done with this pass, you guys, which we call you know his first pass, he's getting a count of six buoys, right? So right there as he enter, exited the gates that we call it, right now he's done with that pass, he gets six buoys. So now if he's at 28 miles an hour and he runs that pass, he gets all those buoys from 19 miles an hour all the way up to 28 if he runs it. 
which I do believe he will. <laughs> guy, <laughs> guy's a machine. <laughs> yes, he is. I, and you guys can see, I mean, just think about the, you know, it's not so much about the strength. I mean, obviously you want to be strong, but this is all about, you know, core being balanced, you know, finding out what works, you know, good for you on a ski. Cause this is, you know, what he's doing right now is, is, is amazing. And it's super, super fun as well. Plus he gets to ski at a place like that. So Ernesto, you said, can you do one handed? Ernesto, when you're turning around a buoy, technically you want to go around a buoy, your turn ball with one hand. You don't have to, because you can go around with two, but trying to cross the wakes with one hand is gonna be really, really hard. Because you need both hands to be able to to withstand the pull of the boat because the boat is really really strong and if you only have one arm or one hand on it i mean technically it's going to put a lot of strain on that one arm you can possibly get hurt but it's yeah it's, it's very very difficult to go one-handed ernesto do you have weakness in one hand oh okay yeah now you'd want to ski two hands then if, if you had a weakness in one hand you could you could try and set up some sort of device that that pulled from the shoulder and maybe you had a strap or something but if you have two hands you you use them so yeah there's That's always like a speed. i mean you can take your hand off if you just want to play around you know it's 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 a uh, fun to do yeah correct 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 so does anyone have any other questions about what you guys just saw okay all right, so Carrie, why don't you pull up? I'm not sure which video. Do you have the the uh, Coach Derek jumping? Did that turn out? Did that video turn out okay? Let's see if we can't. When she pulls that up. So, so, so this is what, go ahead, Derek. Find, you know what tournament skiing is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, you just put it on pause real quick, Carrie. So what Coach Derek is saying, well, wow, look at that. That's a great spot. So what Coach Derek was just saying about, so when you're competing, you guys, there's three events when you, when you compete. There's, there's slalom, there's trick, and there's jump. So slalom skiing we just showed you. Now we're showing you jump. And then there's trick skiing, which we'll show you in just a bit. That's where you're doing spins. You're on a, on a trick board. All, each, each ski is, has a little bit different you know lengths and widths and things like that and they do different things so right now this is the jump part of it and this is derek jumping uh is this in australia or is this in alabama derek where is this no this was um nationals uh 2017 us okay okay carolina oh right okay so if you watch now derek is going to cut out and he's going to go over a jump ramp and then Land, I would say that was probably about a good 60 footer, huh, Derek? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. So if you see him cutting all the way into a ramp right there and then launching off, how many of you would do that? Kamaka, would you do that? Would that look fun? Joseph? I would. You, you <laughs> and Hunter, Emily, Camden, Abby? How, how, about, how about Sned? Sned, would you do it? That's at Worlds in 2017 as well. So it's pretty cool. And Derek was one of the best jumpers in the world, you know, before he decided he was going to retire. <laughs> but we all get to that point where we do. So with jumping, I'm not going to get too technical into the jumping part, but you saw the ramp that he went off of. So uh, Emily, do you have a question? Um. I had a co I had a question for for you cuz you know how I was supposed to move up a ski what ski was I was I going to move up to like was I going to move up to one of the ones that you showed uh, you yes technically yes yeah, so what when you when we talk about moving up like that Emily so the yeah. the skis that we start you guys off with are a lot wider right so they're more stable so if um uh, we should probably have a picture of all the skis. It was a, an, a, an oversight. But the wider the ski is, the more stable it is, right? But 
it doesn't want to turn as fast. You can't really, you know, generate that much speed because you have a lot more resistance. So as your abilities get better, we start putting you on a ski that's a little more narrow, which you can tip it on edge and it gets, it technically would ski faster. So as we do it, so the ski that we were talking about putting you on, I believe was a bushy ski that actually Derek made um, in Australia. He worked for the guy, um, his name is Bushy Brown. Uh, he made some adaptive skis and Derek used to actually build them for him. So it's, uh, that's the ski. Oh, well, Carrie's awesome. That's wonderful. So if you guys see the picture on this, the, the one on the left is a beginner ski. You can see how it does beginner, intermediate competition, and then super competition basically. Right? So they, you can see they get narrower as you're going. So that one on the right, that CGS, that one right there where Carrie's pointing at, that's the one you saw uh, with the guy slalom skiing at that cool lake. He was using that one. So does that make sense to everybody? Kind of the difference between the beginners and the, and the, and the advanced? And what, and what it is is surface area versus being able to get it on edge. So the wide ski, the beginner ski, is very easy to get up, up on because there's a lot of surface area, okay? And because it's so wide, it's very stable. You know, it doesn't want to fall over. Um, and uh, it gives you a nice smooth ride. Now, as you get narrower, you have less surface area. Okay. So because it's not as wide, they're all, it, it's kind of like training wheels. And as you get narrower, it's easier to lean the ski from left to right. And, and of course, that's what we want to achieve. But when you're learning, we don't want you to fall over all the time. So we start on the nice wide ski. And then as you advance, we get narrower and narrower. Do they still have outriggers on them? Or is that <coughs> all it has like that? I only have outriggers on the beginner ski. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you could technically put outriggers on any ski, but generally we just use outriggers for the beginner ones because as you get rid of outriggers and the reason that we do outriggers is skiing is skiing's kind of scary for those of you guys are all seasoned professionals now so it's not as scary for you but did you guys remember your first times being out on the water how it was a little scary you were like whoa I'm all this is, you know it's something new so what we want to do is we want to make sure that you feel safe and that you accomplish you know what we set you out to do so that builds your confidence level and then you go okay hey now i can get rid of those outriggers and start skiing you know getting more dynamic go ahead i flipped over on the ski my first time <laughs> yeah we did that on purpose yeah i know <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe we didn't i don't know um but uh you know so that's the, the 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 concept behind it is making sure that you know we don't you you don't want to scare somebody right off the bat and make them go super fast and have them crash really hard. So they're like, Oh my God, I don't want to do that again. You know, we want to make sure that you're safe and comfortable, you know, and plus, you know, if, you know, um, you know, with, with camp, especially you want to make sure that you're not hurt for all the other sports and activities you could do. So, you know, safety is one of our priorities. Okay. Is there any other questions about something that we've been talking about skis wise? Do you know of any uh, ski places around my area? Emily, where are you again? Remind me. Orange County, California. Yeah, you're down in Orange County. There are. There's a few. There's a few programs down there that are just actually getting started that I'm in contact with. Um, there's a. Her name's Marilyn Homan. Uh, she's been doing some some skiing down there. I can't. I don't remember exactly what lakes they were using. I think. I think it's out in the desert a little bit. So it'd be a few hours ride, you know, drive, depending on where you are, but it's within a couple hours that you can get out. So we'll, I'll definitely send you that information. And you can also log on to a website. Um, I don't know if, uh, Carrie, are you able to pull that up? Uh, it's a website. It's, it's, it's basically uh, USA Adaptive Water Ski, you know, dot org. So that has a map on it that you can click in your, your state. You click on your state and then it opens up all these different connections with people doing skiing. Uh, this one that she's showing? Uh, well, she's showing USA water skis, but if you go to USA Adaptive Water Ski, 
she's pulling it up right now. And that should be it. Okay, so here's here's our website. So this is the website you would want to go to. Then, yep, learn to learn to ski. It tells you about equipment. Tells you about tournaments. Do we have to bring our own skis? No, yeah, I, no. With these programs, everyone's going to have skis for you. That's Nick Farrell. He's out of Minnesota, or not Minnesota, New Hampshire. So if you go, so right here, so in California, see how it lists ability first. You got Valley Children's Adaptive Sports. You got the Ridge Ski School, which is my ski school. You have Achieve Tahoe um, and the United States Adaptive Recreation Center. It's US ARC. They do stuff out of Big Bear. So that's pretty, that's a lot closer to you, Emily. Um, that would be someone that we would want to contact. The, the US... The one down here, the USAR? Yeah, the USAR. Yeah, it's USAR there. So they do learn to ski clinics too. So if you click on them, then it should come up. It should come up with their schedule if they've updated. And there might not be an update now, you know, because of the COVID situation. So it gives you a little background where they are, contacts, stuff like that. And then you can contact that program. And usually they'll have a calendar or something on there, but I don't think anyone's put one up yet just because okay. nobody really knows what's happening. So if you guys go to that and we'll send that out too as well. So that's a good way to, to stay connected and what's going on in the water ski world is through the USA adaptive water ski, uh, dot org. And that's a website that, that we created, um, you know, for the U S. So that's a really good question. So then let's talk about some trick skiing, Derek, you want to, you want to talk about that a little bit? uh yeah how, how about we watch the video so we we know what we're talking about is that possible carrie yeah so carrie's um, gonna pop up this thing on trick skiing so like i said pay attention to the size of the board and difference of what's happening go ahead derek all right so this is trick skiing so we get this guy this guy's name's Eamon. he's a uh, he's from ireland he's a uh, he's very 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 good he's been doing this since he was uh like six years old, so let's get to the right part of the video. I like it though, it's a nice looking boat. So bear with us. Oh, uh, okay. So this is from this is from Worlds uh, in 2019 in Norway. So going off that name, I would assume he's Australian, Duncan. Could be British. British? Yeah. Ah. And he's he's pretty good. He he's he's pretty new to the to being injured. So, so what you're watching here with, with trick skiing, you get the opportunity to do as many tricks as you can in two 20 second passes. So it's actually time. So the, the boat speed is irrelevant. You just go at a speed that is comfortable for you and that, that you can do uh, your tricks at. And each trick here, so if we can slow this down, so that is actually one trick. So one spin, the 360 gets a score. Now, as long as he completes that correctly, okay? So, can't see what quite he's doing here. I think that's just a 180, Derek. Oh, he might so have right done a 180 there. there. So, that's also a trick. So, that, that also gets a score. So, quite often, each time he comes back to the front, he'll be starting a, starting a new trick, okay? So, um, the idea is, is to get as many points in that 20 seconds as you can. Um, and then you can get to the other end, you take a rest, and then you get another 20 seconds to do another set of tricks. Now, you can't repeat any tricks, okay? You can't just do 360, 360, 360, 360, and you can't do it on the next pass either, okay? So each trick 
gets a, gets a score. And so, you know, to complete a pass, you may need, you know, maybe, maybe eight tricks kind of thing. And I mean, the more you can do, the better, like the quicker you are. Like if, if you can try and find a video on, on Connor, Coach Connor, who's very, very good at tricks, he is extremely fast. And that's one of the reasons he's the world record holder and world champion is because of how efficient he can do those tricks. So Connor can spin really quick. So he can do a 360 one way, he do a 360 the other way. Next minute he's doing a, 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 a wake jump. So there's also this surface and wake jumps. So the video we're watching, they were basically all surface tricks. So you, you can just do them anywhere that it's flat and that is comfortable. Okay, so you do that 360, that's just called a wet, uh, it's just called an O, okay? Now, if you do that over the wake and you do a 360 off the wake, it's a wake O, okay? So it's two different tricks. Even though you've basically done the same thing, it's, uh, it gets two different point values. So um, that's kind of what trick skiing is. Um, Maddie, um, I'm, I'm typing with Kerry. Let's show those. Um, so Kerry's got a couple of videos. So in trick skiing, like Derek's talking about, there's surface tricks, and then there's air tricks. You can do, you know, like Connor can do a 360 in the air, right? So here's a video of me, uh, I think of 2017, maybe beard and long hair, but I used to be able to do backflips like this. So I would go back and go, go upside down and then come back. So the more you, it's kind of a tough video to see on, but the more the tricks that you do, the harder the tricks are, the more point value each trick gets. So we have the ability being adaptive, um, and I'll get your questions in just a second. We have the abilities to do flips, front flips, back flips, you know, 360s in the air. You know, you can, you can go backwards, jump backwards, land forward. You know, there's, we have these abilities to do some stuff. And as skiers like Connor, who are so good, they take it to the new level, you know, and that's what's really awesome to watch. Plus, and not just in three event, and there's also wakeboarding. Does anybody here know about wakeboarding? Ernesto, you know about wakeboarding? Anybody else? So it's just another form of skiing, but it's wakeboarding where it's, it, there's a little bit different uh, technicalities, but I think Carrie's going to show this is uh, a guy doing some stuff at a cable park. That's a wakeboard. So he's getting pulled around like by a cable and he can do spins, go up ramps. So those are kind of cool, cool views. So there's slides. The, the, be the benefit of, um, do they call it cable skiing? And uh, it's very, very cheap, okay? So you can go to a cable park for a day and maybe pay, uh, I'm not quite sure on what they are around California, but the one in Oregon was like $25 for three hours. And three hours is a lot of skiing. And you can just hop on whenever you like and just go for a ski. If you fall off, um, the one I used to ski at would, would bring the cable back and pick you up. But some of these, um, they have um, like a little shuttle or maybe, you know, like a little ATV and you swim to the side. That's why we all need to learn to swim and uh, hop in, the, hop in the, the ATV and they take you back to the start and then off you go again. They're great fun. Hitting jumps and stuff is, is really cool. So we, uh, Kerry and I went and did this in Alabama. Um, we weren't as good as this, but, <laughs> but it was great fun. So yeah, really good way to learn. And it's actually a really easy way to learn uh starts because on a boat the rope is at this angle so it wants to really pull you forward whereas on a cable ski the rope's like this so it literally just pulls you out of the water it's it's great so it's a great great learning tool and these are things that you can connect with so emily and say at that kit at that point if you were going to a cable park you would technically need to bring your own equipment we are working with some people that own cable parks to see if we can't get some adaptive equipment there for people to try, but that's something new on the forefront. U.S. is just starting to get involved in more cable parks. It's becoming, you know, a, a, a much more common, so to speak. But at that point, you would need to bring your own 
risky and be efficient enough to be able to get in it, get up if you fall just to get back up. Or like Derek said, you know, swim to the side and get a ride back uh, and go back to the dock. Go ahead, Emily. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this, the ski school you, you said that's closer to my place, mm -hmm. to like my, my area? Mm -hmm. do they have you know how they have you guys have jet skis like following us in the back mm -hmm. of us do they have that still? um it depends each program does different things um i believe the one down in big bear does exactly what we do uh you know they, they were trained they were trained by uh hi dana uh, I, they were trained uh by bill boness um who trained all of us you know he's the super guru uh so he, he, the way he teaches it is the way most of us do it out here. But there are some people back east that they use side skiers. So it would be, you'd be in the water, the two, two human beings would be skiing right next to you, basically on, acting man, like you're out here, Brian. right? So that way you're stable and safe. But for the most part, yes, you would be followed. You know, hey, Emily, I put yeah. um, two links in the chat section, one for water skiing skiing in Irvine and one for water skiing in Big Bear. So you can look at those and maybe explore that more for yourself. Um, and so they're in that little chat window. Oh, in Irvine. Wow, that's actually really close. Yeah, I'm not sure where they're skiing in Irvine or where they would go. Um, but there may be a private lake down there that somebody does it. Uh, 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 Dana, I actually want to find out where you found that. Um, also, um, campers, uh, campers, I should say stay at home, stay at home participants. Um, Kerry has a, a short little video and, and we, we may not get to watch it today, but it's three and a half minutes and she can send you a link, but it's about, you know, if you purchase a ski, how to learn to get in it by yourself. Okay. It's a really, really well produced, uh, little video. So. We well, I, I said we do have a couple of minutes. If it's only three minutes, I say we pop it up if she has it, just so you can you guys can get an idea of what you could do on your own. Okay. To try to learn to be self sufficient, because the more independent you are, right, Abby, the better it is. Hang on, we're just having technical issues. Hi, I'm Carrie Vanderbaum, and I was a competitive water skier for about 15 years. I'm here at the Lakeshore Pool with Amy Bruder, who is a former Paralympic swimmer, and she wants to learn more about water skiing. So Amy, I know you've been recreational skiing for a while now. What is it that you really want to work on? I want to be able to have better balance in the water to be able to be more independent getting into my ski and being able to start myself so that if I ever wanted to go to the lake without an instructor uh, to be able to enjoy some fun time on the lake. So you want to learn how to become more independent and this is a really important piece of water skiing if you want to go out and ski with your family and friends. So being independent includes being able to balance um, in the ski in the water um, but first, she's got to learn even how to get into the ski and, and go from there. Before Amy gets into the pool, we have to make sure the ski fits. When transferring into the cage, we want to make sure that the chair is positioned in a way that's best for her. And she's going to put on the brakes or have someone hold the chair while transferring. Now that Amy is in the cage, I want to make sure that she's able to lean forward as much as possible. So by adjusting the straps on the bottom, I can create more or less dump, just like someone might need in a sports chair. Now that we know that Amy fits in the cage, she's all set to get in the water. Once she's in the water, Amy's going to work on getting into the cage and balancing herself independently. To get into the cage, there's different techniques or ways that someone can use. Amy chooses to go from the side. Now that she's in the cage, there are different ways to balance or counterbalance. Amy will use both body positioning and moving her arms to find the best balance for herself. You can see she puts her arms out to the side and kind of swishes them back and forth. I will stay in the back and help balance a little and catch her from falling over 
uh, just so she doesn't get worn out. And then once she's pretty close to balancing on her own, I'm going to go ahead and let go. Amy learned how to balance herself in the water ski in just about 10 minutes. Now to further challenge her, I will give her the water ski handle and she's going to now need to balance herself while holding the handle out to the side, mimicking what would happen while she waited for the boat to get ready. She will then need to hold the handle out in front of her near her feet to mimic the position she would be in while getting pulled out of the water by the boat. If you want to learn to be independent in water skiing, this is something you can do and learn before the water ski season starts. You can just borrow a ski and a cage if you do not own one, call up your local recreation center pool, and ask permission to get in the water for 30 minutes. This is something that you can do with minimal help. So that's a really great video, you know, to, you know, to understand. So if you have access to a pool or if you're up in our area, you can ask us to borrow stuff. As long as you take care of it and return it, we'll be happy to loan you a cage and a ski to practice in as long as you would do that, you know, and that's, you know, it's a big part of it, you know, cause the biggest, you know, thing is, is like, if you're, say your family boats, like I know I'm going to speak on Abby's behalf because I know her family skis and for years she was just out there and she was the flag holder, you know? So she's just holding the flag while everyone's skiing and she's like, ah, well, I get to go tubing. Tubing's fun, but it's still not as challenging as skiing, right? So then she says, well, I want to start getting my own ski. I want to ski with my family, you know? And that's the big key. And then she became independent and now she can go and ski with her family. So we've loaned her skis and she's learned what she needs and now i think she's going to be getting her own ski is that correct abby okay um, i'm gonna put in for a grant this year but i want to come out and ski first so okay yeah no for sure we're, we're definitely going to put some things together here you know with, with the COVID stuff right now it's you know it's pretty scary you know what's happening it's 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 not going away it's supposed to be slowing down and it doesn't seem to be doing that especially out here in california we, we, we stayed away from it for a while, but it's pretty rampant now. Um, go ahead. Already. Say again, I'm sorry. I've been flagging for my friends and family this year already. Oh, right. Did I take the ski back from you? Yeah. Oh, uh, see what a mean guy I am. No. Didn't even leave it for you. Well, you know what? That's because that's because Eric Snedeker made me take it. He called me up and says, you get that ski away from her. He didn't want you ruining it. <laughs> we couldn't hear you, Eric. I think you're on mute. But anyway, so to go back to, to some of this stuff, you guys, I mean, obviously this is a little bit of the technical part of all this skiing. It's not as fun as just being out and, and, and skiing on the water and doing all this stuff. But these are some of the important nuances to really understand what goes on and the dynamics that you need to be able to be independent and go have fun with your friends and family, as well as with Ability First. And as well as, I mean, whether you compete or not is irrelevant, but we also would love for you to get involved to that part of the sport so you can challenge yourself and compete. We've been trying to get Coach Mayo to do that for a while, because he's pretty good. Coach Mayo is pretty good at about everything he does, so he kind of embarrasses all of us. But you know, once once he gets out there, but now he's got family and he's got his. I don't, where, where are you right now, with Mayo? At home. Oh, is that your office? This is the sunroom. Oh, it's the sunroom. Let's see, it's we clean. all have sunrooms, right? Not dirty. <laughs> hey, uh. Coach Maddie, um, Kerry's going to try and pull up a picture here, um, and it just want to like tie in the the working out and showing um, why it's important to work all those back muscles in water skiing. Okay. Um, you know, water skiing is a very very unique sport in terms of um, movement. You know, it's not like hand cycling where you're like constantly doing something or basketball. You know water skiing is a lot of actually just almost freezing and trying to resist the boat. Okay. Especially in the jump. I don't know if you noticed in the jump, well, oh, there's a very good picture of somebody was, you know, this guy's from, uh, from uh, Sacramento, uh, Brian, and you can see there, he's actually 
holding that position the whole way across the wake. Now he's not moving a lot. Okay. He's, he's just resisting. Look at how strong his shoulders and back are. Okay. And that's really important in water skiing. And that's why Maddie was going through those exercises this morning and trying to, to work on your core. You can see how straight, straight his spine is. And uh, even though he's not disabled, but um, you know, it's, it's all relevant. So um, did, did you have a picture of Mayo, Kerry? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to, I just wanted to add that in there is just tying in like why exercise is important and, and the ones that Maddie was showing about, you know, working those back muscles and, and how they relate to water skiing. So, yeah. yeah you see how Kamaka sitting on his couch about to start lounging and playing some video games. Kamaka, that's being lazy, lazy Kamaka. Do you have a little mouthpiece on that thing too? So you can battle. Are you doing COD? What are you playing? COD, Fortnite? Fortnite. Fortnite. Mm -hmm. How many Fortniters do we have here? Anyone else? Are you the only one that plays Fortnite? Why are you playing Fortnite? It's all about PUBG. <laughs> it's all about who? Minecraft. Oh, PUBG. I about all that. Minecraft. So are there any questions that you guys have about skiing or something that you wanted to talk about? Maybe an experience that you had that was cool that you want to share? That includes his coaches. Counselors, anybody? No, Olivia? but but, but uh, anyone in our area, Abby, you should come and pick up a ski. I mean, they're just sitting there in the, the warehouse. So, yeah, we talked. To, I think Abby Abby's going to come down here pretty 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 shortly. Abby, oh, yeah. 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 Back just to you. Just me when I'll drive down there. Okay, that's I, I like it. I like it that you're driving. It's an independent part. And I got my for sports this summer to use, so I can use that. Did you want to show Mayo's video? Sure. Yeah. This is me uh, not falling. Is this from a regional? Is this from a regional down in Sac? This was from a uh, camp in 2018. Oh, okay. Cool. And then they can, they can hear you talking. Okay. So that's pretty good. The uh, you, you guys said uh, we had a bunch of videos, but apparently they weren't coming through uh, too well with my technical abilities were terrible. So Coach Mayo has much better technical skills. I recognize that lake. Does everyone remember this lake? Make it a big screen, Mayo. Okay, hold on. Does that work? Yeah, that's perfect. So you see how he was being independent? Hey, can we go back, Carrie? Can you just find a just a pad? Sorry to do that. Hey, Mayo, relax. See how he's just kind of finding his balance, right? And you want to do less movement. Once he gets comfortable and set, and the boat goes, takes his hands low. Now he's up independently. That's a very hard thing to do. That's one of the hardest things to have in adaptive skiing is learning how to do that. And he makes it look super easy. But now he's just cutting back and forth. You see how the ropes, the ropes in his hands. He's got good, good body position. Shoulders are strong. Head on edge. Arms out in front. You got to put that ski on the edge. That's really good dynamic. It goes around like four times. Do you want me to stop it? Um, you know what? Give me one more lap here if we can do. Because what I want you guys to see too now, uh, he is on what we call an intermediate. Um, the intermediate speed, when you see the groove in the front of it, I really, I made that intermediate as a beginner to have that rope and block, like you can start with that rope in your hand, which helps you. So, Mayo was starting with the rope in his hand, but this allows you to do both and still keep it at that intermediate level. He told me to start pushing it, so I started pushing it harder. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, starting to get down. So he's making nice edge moves. I mean, it's a little bit choppy, but if you guys really see what he's doing, he's getting that ski on edge. Look at that body position right there. Super strong. That's what we're looking for as you start advancing. The angle, the tip, that's really, that's really good. So the nose of the ski is, well, it's really hard to follow because it's getting too choppy. Yeah. But. Yeah, that's really, that's really good. Okay, Mayo, I think that, that'll work. Thank you for, for sharing that. So, but if you guys look at what Mayo was doing, he was getting that ski to actually get on edge and turn. So as the boat's going this direction, the skier is going, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the skier is going this way, boat's going that way towards you, skier's coming this way. If our ski is going with the boat, if our ski is going with the boat, we're not going to generate that much speed. The more edge and angle we have, the faster you're going to be, like you saw right there with, with Mayo, when he really got good edge and, and good angle towards, you know, with that ski he was able to jump the wakes, create more speed, which, you know, gives you more dynamics. And actually, Mayo, is it easier when you get on that edge? Did you find it was easier to ski? Yeah. No, definitely. It because there's less drag and you, you're, you're, all you are is resisting. Like Derek was talking about with that picture of the able body guy, he's just resisting. He's putting himself into a body position that he can resist the pull of the boat because the boat's really strong. It doesn't matter – how strong you are. I mean, you look at Coach Mayo's arms, I don't care how strong you are, you're not pulling that boat and slowing it down, but you can create body position and angles in order to resist the boat pulling you, if that makes sense to everybody. You know, it's kind of getting a little bit more technical on the sides, but what he did was really, really good. Um, any, any questions? Pretty good, Matty, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think, well, I like your background, Derek. I'm <laughs> uh, getting ready for the dance. <laughs> Who's going to the dance tonight? Abby, are you going to the dance? I only see a couple people up there. Who I want to see. Who's going? I'm going to click my view. Kamaka, you're going. Dana's going. Ernesto's going. Emily, are you going? It's like Aurora's going. Yeah. Aurora's going. Uh -huh. I'm going to have oh, all my cousins. Oh, no. I saw the cousins. I like it. Uh, yeah, well, stay, stay tuned later on. Uh, Kanish is going to help everybody get uh, get their uh, get beautified, get their beautify on. And yeah. then we've got dance this afternoon, so you can learn some new dance skills. Um, but really, get ready for some moving because um, we're going to be moving. <laughs> we're going to be moving. So that's the the um, shoot. I'm going to butcher her name, Aunt Anna. Yes. Anya. 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 So like she's an getting... onion, but an Anya. Okay. Yeah, you guys could log into that too, because she's, you know, this is what she does. You teach you some new moves, because yeah. if, you're, if you're anything like me, then you can't dance. I'm logging on to learn some moves for sure, because, yeah, I, I was not possessed with with any sort of rhythm skills. Oh, at all. Wow. It's, uh, it's fun to dance, so be cool. All right. Anything else anybody want to add? Carrie? No, that was good. Oh, oh, I thought it was good. I'm just going to say, there's lots of women who ski. We didn't actually show any videos of the women, but lots of women who ski. So don't don't think it's a man's sport. Yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely not. No. Nah. For sure. That, that is for sure. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys all logging in, and we'll see you guys this afternoon for some dance action. Is that right? Who's going to dance? I'll see you online with Anya. See ya. Adios. Ciao. Au revoir.